Guys, welcome back to another episode of The Jay Hutton Show. If you're into the spirit world and mediums, you'll definitely know my guest today, the one and only Psychic Sally. Oh, hello, darling. Thank- it's so lovely <laughs> to be here. Thank you for asking thank- me. Thank you so much for coming on. I know that obviously you were in Liverpool last night. Yeah. And that's why you've been able to fit Pop into in. your schedule, which is really, I'm really uh, pleased Oh, you're, you you're so, so welcome, darling. And, um, you know, I think I said to you um, uh, before, I'm really into tattoos at the moment. Yeah, well, we talked about this the other yeah, day, didn't we, that you had your did. first tattoo. I had my first tattoo and I've, um, I, I visit, I've got friends that live in Monaco, so I go there quite a lot. We've been going there for years. And... Um, I mean, it all sounds so grand, but it's like a little village, Monaco. Yeah. It reminds me of Fulham. I've never been. Really? Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> when Fulham, I grew up in Fulham. And it reminds me of Fulham. And um, I was there and this uh, this friend that I, I stay with, and she said, oh, you know, her, her, her son, he's, he's we've got this amazing tattoo artist. She's just in just up in the town. Yeah. Anyway, I went there. I said, oh, I want a tattoo uh, in memory of John. Yeah. Because whenever I always wanted a tattoo, and he used to go to me, Oh, you know, what are you going to look like when you're 80? Well, I'm 71 now, so I'm nearly 80. <laughs> it's a bit like, I don't care. No, You've you got, don't, know, do don't you? Know. So she said, Oh, darling, you need to have uh, John, my love. So I went, Oh, that's good. She said, Where do you want it? I said, On my foot, because I thought I'll hide it first. Yeah. You know, I got a bit nervous. First one. F- first you can one. Cover you, know, it yeah, yeah. you don't like yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to have one right along here. Yeah. I Big. am here. <laughs> full <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> but that's what Fern said, don't you go and have a full sleeve. Um, so anyway, I go to this wonderful tattoo place and um, she did it. But I said to you, I because I think of my age, she was a little bit frightened. She didn't want to hurt me. And I wasn't worried about, I knew it would slightly hurt. Someone said to me, oh, you know, really hurt. Yeah. So I was anticipating real pain. Yeah. But I thought, do you know what? It's worth it. It's going to say, you know, it's going to mention his name, my love. So yeah. I had my foot and I was laying sort of full. You lay, you sort of lay down, you know. It's like, for me, foot, like, she said, lay, lay flat. I went, what, really? <laughs> I thought she's going to clamp me. Do you know? I had visions of Game of Thrones, yeah. you know, being like Do you know, this. you don't know how someone's going to react when you take their foot as well, though, because some people kick out. Do so, they? Yeah, because some people, everyone's pain threshold's different. So you yeah. do have to be careful. I'm surprised she didn't clamp you down <laughs> out, out of fear. Yeah. I've been so, kicked in the face. So she, she said, um, she said to, well, she, it took longer to draw it than it did to actually do yeah, it. You find that a lot of the time, yeah. Sometimes I find it takes a lot longer for me to set up for the tattoo than to actually do the tattoo. Yeah, well, I think it did. I haven't seen there for yeah. about three hours. Anyway, <laughs> I had this tattoo done and um, I'm happy with it. So now I'm thinking, hmm, I wouldn't mind something else done. You know. Oh, really? What, after you had it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You get the bug. That's it, though, isn't it? And especially if you haven't been put off by the pain, then no. you look into the next one then. Yeah. I think if you have a bad experience with your first tattoo, it sometimes puts a lot of people off. Well, and we were sitting in this restaurant this summer. We were in Italy and on holiday. And this um, family were on the... And everything's, you know, you're sitting on the beach in a lovely restaurant, everyone's tanned, yeah. you know, people there, they were Italian, these people, so they were sort of really um, sophisticated. And um, she had this, and she t- removed this top, or she, ha- oh my God, it was like a big sunflower on her, sh- on this part of her arm, like a, right on her shoulder. Yeah. So it was all oiled, where she and she was all suntanned, and she was beautiful. She was about twenty. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and there was, a, and I thought, I'm going to have a sunflower. Really? My, and, and then my daughter went, No, you know. I said, oh, I want a sun. I want that on there. So I said, Oh, can I take a picture of it? So I took a, and I, I'd really love that there. Yeah, it would be nice. The thing is, do you do you find that now? Obviously, you haven't really considered having a tattoo before now. No. Was there a reason for that in particular? Well, just. Uh, I think it was, I think tattoos, they're works of art, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, they are. And, and I think that... Well, some. Some, yeah, some, there were some, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are, yeah, there are. But I, but I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, someone sitting in their prison cell yeah. with a little pin doing that. Yeah, do I mean? Yeah, hate and love. Yeah. And, but no, I think that they're works of art and they, they can commemorate yeah. occasions. Yeah, 100%. And they're like memories. And, yeah. you know, like yourself, it, it, it's, it's an amazing art form. Yeah, it is. Whereas, you know... When I was younger, tattoos were just like, yeah. you know, an anchor on a man's arm. Yeah, you know, a bit like Popeye. Do yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It has changed so it's much in the last, I'd yeah. say, 20 years. Well, it's like my work. 
You know, yeah. when I when I first started, yeah. when I first, the very, very first time I got taken to a spiritualist church, because that's the only place yeah. that you could go if you were experiencing odd things happening to you, yeah. there was no such word or uh, term as being a psychic. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how old were you when you first realised that you had this sort of gift? Well, um, and that's so nice of you to call it a gift. Well, that's what I think it is, because, like, you, for me, you're, you're able to help people who are grieving as well, which I think that is a gift if you can give that to yeah, someone. Yeah, well, I think so too. I think it gives people hope. Yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, I think, well, you don't realise what you're doing until it's pointed out to you with anything really. You yeah. know, I've I've worn spectacles, glasses since I was three years old. Yeah. But it wasn't until you go to school and, you know, oh, you're in four eyes, you know, and yeah. you suddenly think, oh, I'm a bit different. Yeah. You know, from so so it was the same with this ability of yeah. mine, and it was really when I was went to my secondary school. So I was eleven, yeah. and it was a mixed school, and you know the boys and they tease you. Yeah, and I must have said something to this boy. In fact, I can't remember what I said, but I can remember in my head. I can. I'm looking at the scene, and we had like this tennis court. Yeah. Um, in the playground because the school that I went to, they'd built this new school in a park. Right. And the park must have had a tennis school. So they must have thought, oh, we'll build a school around it. Yeah. When I look at that. Anyway, so we had this with this tennis court and um, uh, they were one side of the fence and I was the <coughs> other. And this boy said something to me and I said something to him about his name not being his name. Well, no one knew that his mum had... To, we're talking about the early 60s here yeah. when it was like, you know, d divorce and that was still yeah, like you didn't course, really talk yeah. about... And, you know, you kept your mouth shut. Yeah. You, you you know, kids were seen and not heard yeah. even then. And um, so I said something about his name. And, you know, as I'm talking to you, I remember the name. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. And I said to him, well, you know, you know be just being nasty really because he was nasty to me. Yeah. And I, I said, oh... You know, well, at least my name, la la la, isn't. And oh my goodness me! And he, he must have like that dwelled on him all day. <laughs> 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 Which, when I think about it, is what I wanted. Do yeah. you know I, mean? I was being horrible? Don't bully to a it. psychic. <laughs> don't, don't, don't bully. Because what it was, I we were wearing this. I, I was 11 and you wear like a grown-up uniform. Yeah. And it was in the days, believe it or not, when you wore suspenders right, with, okay. with stockings then, you know, they didn't have to really? tie it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, he mentioned something about seeing my a suspender, like a stock, my stocking. Yeah. And I was sort of like walking by. I thought it was so grown up, you know. <laughs> and he mentioned something about my bum or something like that. <laughs> and um, and I, I turned around. I went, well, at least uh, because your mum, well... He was dwelling on this all day. Really? And thinking, how does she know that? And then he, the next day he came over to me and he was all like uh, subdued because yeah. he was a bully, yeah. this boy. Yeah. And t was bully all the way through my school years there. Yeah. But, oh, he never came near me. Really? No. He was freaked out. He was freaked out. How did you know? Do you know my mum? I said, no, I don't know your mum. I said, you know, I don't know you. Who are yeah. you? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you feel about that? When she, did you think... How do I know that? Yes. Because I was going to say that's, yes. that must but have been I still do strange that. for yourself. Yeah. I was on stage last night yeah. here in Liverpool yeah. and I was saying things and I thought, how do I know that? And that is the truth. I think the moment that I become complacent or um, you could say thinking, well, I know everything about this, is the moment I have to stop. Yeah. I I'm completely and utterly fascinated by my work. Yeah. God, it's so interesting. I mean, don't you do... I mean, you're obviously an artist. Yeah. You know, you are... You know, if, if you didn't do tattoos, yeah. you would express your art form in yeah. one way or another. Yeah, 100%. Probably drawing or painting or yeah. whatever. Um, so you must, when you're tattooing yeah. with your artwork, you must be thinking sometimes, how do I do that yeah. on skin? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I, I've said this a lot when people used to say, have you always been able to draw? And I said, yeah, but I never understood that people couldn't draw. Yeah. So it must be the same thing. Well, that's you, it. You don't know any different. Do well, you? I think that when it that's because it comes from a pure well, yeah. as I put it. You right. know, we all have this well inside of inside of us, which is us. Yeah. Which doesn't belong to anyone else. Yeah. You know, I say to people, we all have a natural form of intuitiveness. Yeah. You can be a complete and utter cynic 
sceptic of this sort of work, of yeah. the esoteric world. Yeah. You can be completely like, no, I don't I don't like the term believe because no. it's not about a belief system. No. I'll tell you, I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But basically you can you can like not believe, not understand any of it, not want to know anything about it, but you cannot stop yourself from having this well of a natural form of intuitiveness, which is yeah. a latent psychic ability. Really? It just sits there. Yeah. For many people, it only is awoken when it wakes up when we lose someone. Yeah. And we feel, oh my goodness me, I got a sign. Or oh, I saw something. <clears throat> I just know he or she is there. Yeah. Um, and that's you sort of slightly opening the door yeah. to your psychic ability. Yeah. Do you find that it's I mean, obviously you you do a lot of readings for people as well. And do you find that there's Oh, I'm sure you have found this, but like there's a lot of skeptics. And if they're closed off, that it makes it very difficult for you to read them. No. Is that, oh, it's just, it's, no. it's, no. How do they, but how do they react if they're, if they're closed off? Do, do you find you're. They're, they were completely and utterly gobsmacked. Really? Like that boy at school. Yeah. Who had never, ever even properly entertained. But the, we, that's what I'm saying. In those days, you weren't, he didn't say to me, oh, you must be psychic. There was no, I mean, I'd be loving. No, I'd love maybe one <clears> of your <throat> listeners, your viewers, to tell me where the name, where the term psychic came from. Obviously, it comes from, it derives, obviously, I would imagine from psychiatry or, or you know, yeah. something to do with your mind. Yeah. That's where it comes from. But there was no term like that. No. I was just odd. I was just a freak. <laughs> uh, just to interrupt, psychic is derived from the Greek word. Psychikos, which means in the mind. Oh. Ah. So, it, the Greeks. so, okay. so, so, That's so, yeah, yeah, we've just been told that psychic comes from the Greek term psychosis, psychosis. Uh, psychikos. Psychikos, oh, okay. which is in the mind. Yeah. Well, it's definitely in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So, I, I think that, yeah, but you know, the mind, look, we've only got to look at our brain. Yeah. That big. Yeah. We only use that much of it. 100%. 100% agree with that. And I think like going back to when you were talking about intuition and stuff, I think it's... It, so do you believe that everyone's got a level of this ability? Yes. Because I, I, I would agree with that because I think that's what maybe intuition is. Like you just, sometimes you just get a feeling you think, no, that's not right. Is, is, is that the sort of thing? Yeah. And I mean? always say to people, you know, because I... I'm my biggest critique right. of my work and what I do. Yeah. No, you know. That's why you're so good at it, though. I think. I think that everyone, if you if you are like that about yourself, it, it always pushes you to become the best of what you can be. Yeah. Well, it's it's not that I'm I'm wanting to be the best. I'm no. not thinking I need to, um, you know, look at what I'm doing it with great depth because I want to be the best. I just I look because it's a huge responsibility. Yeah. Of course, yeah. You know, talking to someone that has lost yeah. uh, a person, but yeah. there is loss in many forms, yeah. you know, especially nowadays people lose their jobs and their yeah. home and their health and, yeah. you know, all things like that. And yeah. it, it just, it sort of like really is, um, uh, loss is, is really in every sphere of our life and yeah. every level of our life. And I'm handling that on a daily basis. So yeah. I have to be very aware that, not everyone, um, although they might think they want to speak to somebody that that, that can pick up their energy, because yeah. it's all about energy, and um, it, it, my mind yeah. interprets that. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. I, I, seriously, I don't know what is happening. Really? I, you know, I call it the little valve. Yeah. Um, I always remember my mum saying to me, what do you think is going on then, you know? <laughs> you know I, I remember saying, and I used to say, well, I think it's a little valve. And um, what do you mean? I said, well, I think we've all got this little valve that does that, that opens and closes. You know when you have a moment and you think, oh, I do think of someone and the phone rings and yeah. it's that person. Yeah. You know, your valve's open. Yeah. And that little bit of, you could say, psychic yeah. energy is going through it and then your valve closes. Yeah. And, you just, just, and then you might think, oh, my <clears> goodness <throat> me, I thought of so-and-so and I bumped into them. Your little valve was open. Well, I think with me, my valve... Is open and it doesn't. It's open. Really. Now you could look at that and think, "Well, that's, that's amazing." Yeah. You know, or you could look at that and think, "Well, that's abnormal." Right. So there, there are two ways. Perception, isn't it? 
It is perception. Yeah. Exactly. It is perception. So my little valve is open yeah. and all the time I'm able to harness that little bit of energy yeah. that is around a person. I was, I was, what I was going to say is that it, you can go into, we've all done, walked into a room or an area where there are other people and we've come out and we've gone, oh, wasn't the atmosphere incredible? Yeah. Or, oh my goodness me, wasn't the atmosphere awful? That's the individual yeah. picking up energy from the other people yeah and that is your natural form of intuitiveness working really heightened we can all do it animals do it yeah and we just we accept that an animal can do that yeah when there's no i've got a cat um often my cat will stand there and do that and its hackles will go up yeah and it's like and i think what are you looking at and he's picking something up in that room yeah it's true they say well they say that with animals don't they that they you they they know. Are intuitive to things. You know, like my, that. I've got dogs. I've always had dogs. I was brought up with dogs, and you know, you, before you've even got anywhere near the house, the dog will know you're coming home. Yeah. How? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Where's energy? Yeah. It it, it, it yeah, it's it just is. this this natural form of intuitiveness. Yeah. And I totally believe in all this stuff. I know there's a lot of people who who don't believe in it, and that's fair enough. You know. Well, but- well, I think that how sad <laughs> and ignorant of us to think that. We are not something unique. Yeah. And there's absolutely no doubt our bodies and our minds and our soul yeah. are able to do far, far more than we would ever imagine. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Because I don't like I don't believe that when it's the end physically that that's it. Of course I it just, isn't. I just I just no. can't you know, and then there'd be a lot of people probably watching and think, well, you're just, you know, you're holding on to hope and stuff like that. But I just think yeah, from but, a, yeah, but what's wrong? Also, yeah, but also, what's wrong with hope? What's wrong yeah. with holding on to hope? Because course, I yeah. think that hope is also part of um, the energy, yeah, and the possibility. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree uh, totally. And you know, I, I think that death isn't final. No, it's it has a finality where you're not here anymore and yeah. people can't see you, but our bodies are just the vehicle for our soul. Yeah, I believe that too. And, you know, you you got to be careful because you can move into um, religion and yeah. denomination. Nothing wrong with that and yeah. faith systems. Yeah. But I'm a great believer. I hopefully, uh, touch wood, always respect every denomination and every faith system, course, whatever yeah. anybody, you know, as yeah. long as they're not hurting children, Others and animals yeah. is fine by me. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Course, that that yeah. particular religion. But what my work isn't, and it has nothing to do with religion. Yeah, it is about trusting. Yeah. Um, it's not about a belief system. In other words, you don't have to believe in God. I personally believe in a God. Yeah, that's just me personally. Yeah, I believe there's a higher energy. Yeah, me too. Uh, divinity, you could say. Yeah. You know, I, to explain it very simply, I think that we've got earth plane. That's you and me now. Yeah. Then in the middle, we have what we refer to as spirit world, where yeah. our energy goes when our body does. And then you have divinity. That yeah. keeps it nice and simple for me yeah. in my head. Yeah. And I think that so when we, when our body dies and our soul leaves our body yeah. and goes to this other dimension, which yeah. is basically here. Yeah. But we say heaven. Yeah. I love the word heaven because there's lots of space when we do that. Yeah. <laughs> but basically it's here. It goes to this other dimension that you carry around you and I carry around me. Yeah. And definitely, <clears throat> hopefully, one day we can attain divinity. Yeah. But it doesn't automatically come no. with you dying. No. No, that makes a lot of sense. Well, it does because there are a lot of people that are not good people. Yeah. Um, that when they die, where do they go? I'm asked that all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? If especially if you don't look at it from a re- religious point of view. Yeah. Well, um, I think they go to their soul goes to another dimension. Yeah. But there's no way that soul is able to experience divinity. Yeah. Whereas, um, and I don't know what we need to do to to get to divinity. I have no idea. No. And I don't think it is necessarily, I just don't, you know, I just know this. I just sense this. I don't think it is necessarily doing good deeds all the time no. here on Earth Plane. No. I think it's what, like, it's, you know yourself if you're a good person or don't not. Don't you? You yeah. do. And I just think that's 
as much as I think it needs, as long as you're a good person. Yeah, well, you try. I mean, we <coughs> do, you know, it, none of us have a halo over our head. No one's perfect. You know, my nan, she had this saying. She used to say, Sally, if all our faults were a pimple on our face, no one would ever go out the door. <laughs> this is true. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I think, how true is that? You know, because he's going, oh, I've done this wrong and I've done... Yeah. And she's saying, well, you know, wait a minute. Yeah. And, and I think if we can recognise our faults yeah. and try perhaps not to repeat that yeah. or try not to do that again or try not to that fault to impact others as it has done that we are recognising and we think, oh, shit, no, I wish I hadn't have done that. Yeah. Do- then we are, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, of course. But it's a life's journey, isn't it? 100%. I totally agree with you. And I, I watch a lot of these um, things on YouTube about near-death experiences and not so much like, oh, I had a car crash and nearly died. It's more about, it's about people who have died on like operating tables and let their soul has left their body and they've seen yeah, themselves. Yeah, watch, you're watching yourself. Yeah, and and I've watched so many things on that and and that's convinced me completely that there's something else after you pass away. Well, I'll tell you something that happened to me when I was a little girl. <clears throat> I can't remember how old I was, but we, um, I must have only been, I don't think I was 10 years old. Um, and we lived in this big old house in Fulham that my granddad owned, yeah. but we only lived in the bottom half. When I look at that house, and the house is worth millions now, yeah. and you could have had it magnificent, but you just lived in the basement on, yeah. on the first floor. Yeah. You know, and um, my granddad used to rent out rooms in the 50s and 60s yeah. because of uh, after the war, so many places were bombed. People rent rented rooms. You didn't rent a flat anyway. Yeah. So we lived there, and... Um, I used to have these dreams where I was flying, really? where I would fly in my dreams. Yeah. And I'd get up in the morning and say to my mum, well, my arms ache because I was flying last night. She used to go, oh, don't be so ridiculous. <laughs> I said, no, I was because I would be like this in these dreams and doing that. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I said, was talking one day, one, I got up one morning, and my dad was there and I went, oh, so he said, you know, you must, you can't tell people you do this because you're not flying. This is a dream. I said, well, in my bedroom which is the bedroom they slept in. Me and my sister slept um, in the same room as them. We shared a bed, with what, a top and tail. Yeah. And I said, on top of the window, <laughs> there was like an old wooden pelmet that went round this huge window yeah. in the bedroom. And I said, there's a penny. So he went, what do you mean? I said, there's a penny. I saw it when I flew out the window last night. So nothing was said. And this is my dad all over. He's a very... Silent man, a man of very few words. And I don't know, it must have been a couple of days later. He came downstairs and he went, bang, he put this penny, bang, on the table. So he went, is that the penny you saw? So I said, oh, I don't know. It was a... He went, that was on top of the pelmet. Now, you know, I'm only five foot now. So when I was about 10, I must have been about three foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's no way, even if I was jumping on the bed, there's no way I could have seen that penny. Out, what happened there? That is just... And he never, ever questioned what I said after that. Really? Yeah. So that had convinced your dad? Well, your... what it did, it made my dad curious, didn't it? Yeah. And w- w- what were your mum and dad like before this? Were they Were they Well, they're really young. Sort of they're, my mum's only 16 years older than me. Oh, really? So, and my dad was like 18. So they oh, were wow. really young parents. Yeah. And... We, you know, I come from a, I'm very proud of a very, very working class family. Yeah. So my mum would get, my dad was a plumber. He'd get up in the morning, go off on his bike. We never had a car. You know, I remember the day we got a fridge. So <laughs> Joe, it, it was, yeah. there. It, I was brought up and in an era like that. So the, they were just, they were motivated weekly just to put food and our shoes on our feet. Yeah. You know, and a winter coat. Yeah. So to sit and sort of have a discussion yeah. about my feelings and what I was seeing and dreaming, that it was like, I don't think so. That's yeah. not gonna because he he was a pigeon fancier, so he'd come home from work and be in the garden with his with his lofts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was like there was no real interaction talking about your day like yeah. there is now. Yeah. It, it just that just wasn't done. You went, you got up, you went out to work, you earned your money, and that was it. Yeah. So when I look at my life as a child, I was a bit odd. Yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Because I would see things in this house in Waldemar Avenue. And again, at that time, at that time period as well, 
where this wasn't really a thing and it no, wasn't talked about. No, it was about. never spoken about. I don't know. Did people look at you like you were crazy? Like for well, these... uh, well, the only place they didn't was when I went to a spiritualist church. I did what they referred to as platform work. Well, what's that? Well, you basically stand on a box. In, I would imagine in some spiritualist churches it's still the same. Yeah. You see, spiritualist, spiritualism is a religion. Right. I don't follow that. Yeah. Yet they embrace anyone, the spiritualism spiritualist churches yeah. so you know um i totally respect them yeah okay but i'm not a spiritualist yeah. although i interact with spirit yeah. which is a bit it's a bit difficult perhaps if you don't understand it to get your head around it. yeah um but when i was sort of like 12 13 my mother would take me to Kelverdon Road in Fulham where they've got the spiritualist church which is still there yeah and i would do platform work i'd stand on this little platform in front, like in front of almost, you could say, a little altar. Yeah. And give messages. Really? And and how did people react to you? Well, they thought it was amazing because I was incredible. I, with, not you know, I was like, yeah. when I look back, it was like, you know, WTF. What's happening here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bet. And my mum would say, you're going to come back next Monday. And that when, as I got older, when I got to about 15, um, uh, Fulham Town Hall on a Monday night started to do dances and I wanted to go to the dance Yeah, at Fulham Town Hall. But no, the Spiritualist Church was open. So we used to have this argument. Oh, really? And the times I got on a number 14 bus, people that live in Fulham or know Fulham, especially from when my era, yeah. the, the 14 bus went down Fulham Road, stopped outside the Morris Convent, which is Kelverdon Road. It's not the Morris Convent anymore. It's an independent school. And I'd get off there and not go, if, if mom, because I, like my mum would say, I'm going to check if you've gone. Because yeah. she wanted me to go to the spiritualist church because she recognised it was the only outlet for me. Yeah. But I wanted to go dancing. Really? Which was like another five or six stops up the road. <laughs> that was so, that's so good. Did you, so did you get into dancing? Did you, were you doing that a lot? Well, I quite used to dance, yeah, because I I'd loved a bit of Tamla Motown and all of that. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not a dancer, no way. I no. mean, I wouldn't turn down Strictly, but no. they, <laughs> who would? Shout out. I would, yeah, I would. <laughs> but no, I'm not. Certainly, no, I don't have a. I don't think I've got one bit of rhythm in me. Really? No, but I used to go because it was, it was all the boys were there. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you meet your husband? Oh, I met my husband at. Um, well, actually, I met him. He got in. I was going out with his best friend. Oh, really? <laughs> and my mum and dad used to have, like, um, a New Year's Eve party, fancy yeah. dress party, and his best friend said, oh, I've got some friends that want to come, you know, down the pub. Anyway, he, John was uh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's how we met. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's how we met. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, I just want to say before we go into that, I'm really sorry about your husband passing away. I saw that, that happened. Yeah, was it I last know. year? That was our September you died of COVID. Yeah, yeah, that's so sad. Yeah, so that was um, – so we were together many, many years and married for 47. We were together about 51 years. That's incredible, that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a long time to um, – to only have the one man sort of like rub your back and kiss you. Yeah, it's so, it, it's, you know, it's something that you don't hear a lot of in this day and age though as well. Like, you know, it's quite, it's a very rare thing for Will people. he put up with me? <laughs> you know, seriously, when I think about it, he put up with me. Really? You know, and I'm a very much, I'm a very loyal person yeah. and I'm like, I'll bet the devil you know. Do you know what, what, what do you, you know, I've been with the same bank like for, for 40 years. I could probably get so much better deals, but it's been like, no. Oh, you know, yeah. better the devil you know. Yeah. And it was like that with John. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so many times I could have like thought, oh, what? But it was like, oh, no, he's all right. <laughs> yeah, and I'd, be, and I'd be being chased by all these like, other, other, you know, because I was a tiny little thing, you know, yeah. when I think about it. And, um, <laughs> it, 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 but no, it was like, no, he's all right, you know. <laughs> and how, how long did you say you were together? 51 years? About 51 years we knew one another. Well, we, we, but we got married 47. Yeah. But I knew him before then. Like, we were like friends and yeah. um, he was part of like the group, the gang that you went about about in, you know. Yeah. And it's so mad that you've, you've spent <clears throat> like, well, most of your life together. Yeah. You? Well, I think one of the first times we used to say we met, we didn't know that, who we were and that we would get together. Mm. We'd gone, there was a hamburger joint, one of the first hamburger places that opened in um, South Kensington. Right. 
And to go to South Kensington was like so wonderful. And I was with my girlfriends and he was with a gang of fellas. And we went in, ordered all our food. And I was brought up in really, really strict by my dad. Right. And um, all of a sudden the people started disappearing off the table. So, and they were outside the window and they were going, and it was like, and I was sitting there, John was at the end of the table. I vaguely remember him by the jacket he was wearing. Yeah. But he remembers it because I wouldn't get up. Oh, really? And I said, my dad, my dad's going to kill me if I run out of this restaurant and not pay. They all thought it was hysteric. You know, it was hoot. They were running up and down South Ken, like, it was, and, and out the window. Yeah. And, of course, the waiter came over and there was, like, 20 offers. I don't think, I, might, I couldn't have even had, like, 50p in my purse, you know. <laughs> and John paid for it all. Oh, really? Because he said he could see I was terrified. I was glued to that chair. There was no way I was going to get up and run out of that restaurant. All my other friends so had run out of the restaurant. <laughs> and that was the first time uh, we we <clears throat> connected. Yeah. And then he remembers me at a party where I was standing in a doorway and he remembered the dress I was wearing, which was like a keyhole dress cut out like that and like a hole at the back. Yeah. And he remembered I was the girl in the restaurant. Oh, really? So, you know, it's really weird, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's, isn't it? it's amazing what you remember from such far, far along Well, time and I ago, think it's it, really? then that you realise you're meant to be together. Yeah. Because it was almost as if I feel there was like... Someone there saying, yeah. be together, be together. But I was so interested in all these other fellas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what age were you at this time? Oh, I don't know, about 16 were or you? 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so you, I, I remember watching your TV show. Oh, yeah. And um, John, John was on that. Yeah, he was on Because you went it. everywhere together, right? Yeah, went everywhere. yeah, because he used to drive me. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, he'd drive me around, although I'm a better driver than him and always have been. <laughs> <laughs> because it got to the stage where he couldn't drive in the rain, couldn't drive if it was too sunny, couldn't drive in the dark, couldn't. It's, it's like, well, actually, John, do you know you're not, you can't drive. Just let me get in that car. I'm going to take it. So I'd take us to the gig. Yeah. He would like go and park the car. I'd go do the gig, come out, and he'd go, "You're going to drive because it's dark." It's like, what is all this about? <laughs> That's so funny. So that was him. So we'd have these arguments coming on. They filmed it all. It was all genuine. Yeah. That, that was our life. But it was yeah. it was quite amazing. Yeah. How did the TV stuff come about? How did you get... Because um, oh, you've probably TV. heard of her, Anna Richardson. I know the name, yeah. She's yes. on Channel 4. She yes. does all the sex things, yes. you know, where people are naked. Yeah. And she's standing, you know, it's like, Anna. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It was, she came and she was a client. Right. And, you know, something was said there that was like, no one knew about that she was, and she was writing, coming up with ideas then yeah. uh, across the board, but mainly for ITV. Yeah, and she just came up with this idea, and I, <laughs> she came round, and she went, "Do you want to read this treatment?" And I went, "What's a treatment?" Yeah, you know, that, that, so naive. Yeah, and I went, "Oh, I don't know if I can do it." I said, "So she, said, do you think you can do that?" I went, "Well, we could give it a try." Yeah, so she went, "Seriously?" I went, "Yeah, why not?" And it was like, you know, I'm, I'm as interested as you yeah. in what I do. Yeah. It, if it might work, it might not on camera, yeah. but it worked. But yeah. I also think, you see, as well, my work also enthralls people because it's personality-led. Yeah, I agree. Because I can't change who I am. No. You know, and that's totally. what I said to her. I said, if you want me to do X, Y, Z, it has to be me doing it. Yeah. For one, I don't read scripts. Yeah. I loathe scripts. Anything yeah. that is scripted, it's like, oh, here we go, you know. Yeah. And I have to do it off camera because I could have to, like, read it. Hopeless at scripts. It has to come from my heart. It has to come from me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. It's funny because when we used to watch your show, uh, my dad used to, had never been to a medium or anything like that, and he, he always said he wouldn't. Um, I don't know where that comes from, maybe fear of not wanting to know or anything like that. But yeah, but a lot of say, fellas are like that as well, you yeah, know. Yeah, but he used to say, if I was ever going to go, it would only be Psychic Sally that I'd go to. Oh, yeah. how nice yeah. is that? Yeah, that's why I reached out to you because I thought, yeah, obviously, you know, my dad passed yeah, away yeah, last yeah. year. And I thought, well, I'll, ju I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And, but but how nice was. because your dad also <clears> became aware that, you know, it's not the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, we used to have talks about this situation, you know, when when you pass away, what do you believe happened? And my dad used to say, you know, I believe that your physical obviously dies, but I don't believe your energy. No. Just, it can't just no, you dissipate. Can't. It has to go somewhere. And he believed that it goes to the, back to the source where yeah. it came from. 
And um, that was my granddad's belief, his dad's belief. And and we've had lots of chats. And again, since I watched these ND experiences, since my dad's passed away, and I believe it's totally real. I just do. Yeah. And with my experience with when my dad passed away, um, <clears throat> at the time when when um, he pa- he actually passed away at work, um, and we got a chance to to be there with him. And one thing I did think was that um, I I felt like. He wasn't in his body anymore, I, but I felt that he was there. Yeah. And that's a feeling I can't explain to anybody. And I've never, I, I no. wouldn't have probably believed if I hadn't experienced it myself. Well, but, that's death. Yeah. That's, that, and that happens. That happens when uh, John died mm. um, and I was able to hold him. I was able to be there, and let, although he had gone. Yeah. But as I lay there with him and um, I, I was able to move his head here yeah. and put his hand over my legs because I was sort of and he came back really and it was like I looked at his hand and his hand when I put his hand on my leg was like a a bluey color and then when he died and I well they the machines were turned off although he would all I he was already gone yeah his hand went a different cut what and it was like I knew he was there with me and I said to the nurse she was at the end of the bed she said he's gone Sally I always remember those words and I said yeah but he's here it it was like he was there with me and but you cannot explain it to anyone no I I really because it's it's almost like you're in a bubble yeah yeah it's very, uh, it's like a very personal feeling. Yeah, well, it's like, you it's like it, your, 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 what you're connected with is his soul. Yeah. Your, you, you were connected with your father's <laughs> soul. I was connected with John's soul. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Because I remember looking at him and thinking, he's not in there anymore. No. That's, that's now a shell. Yeah, that and, you and, can. And it's totally, I'll it's carried him through all his Understand it. Get it. Totally. But you, you know, let's hope. Certain people never see that. Yeah. But we we are all yeah. all of us, you know. We're yeah, all gonna um, go, and that's that's part of it. Yeah, it's it's. It, but I think again with what we're talking about here is that you know I think the hope side of thing is is so nice for anyone, even if you don't believe in it. But you know, I found that you know, I don't feel like he's gone. Like I, I like maybe I'm trying to convince myself that you know, and that's the my, that's like a coping mechanism maybe, but. In my 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 feeling, what we were talking about before, like intuition, gut feeling, whatever you want to call it, I don't feel like he's not here. No, because I he feel was, like he's somewhere. Absolutely. Well, he was such a powerful force within the family in yeah. a good way. Yeah. And he was so proud of all of you. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no way, and he didn't want to go then. So no. it was like, yeah. you know, why would his energy leave you? It wouldn't. Yeah, and I I believe that totally. And and how I, I suppose a question I've got for you is that. Since obviously, and if you feel uncomfortable about this, just say it's not a problem. But you know, since your husband's passed away, do you still feel his energy? And oh yeah, do you have like, do you have a connection still? Yeah, and, definitely. And does that come through with your ability? I don't, how yeah, does well, it work? I think that there's no doubt. I like to feel that, um, you know, my ability is available for others, but it's also within me. Yeah. On a personal level. Yeah. Um, and I know he's there. Uh, yeah. And. I've been really lucky. I've seen him. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah, he died on a Monday. Well, the machines were turned off on the Monday and I don't really remember much of the Monday or the Tuesday, but I remember getting up on the Tuesday thinking, oh, you've got to have a shower, you know, it's been two days. And I came out of the shower, walked into our bedroom and he was sitting on his side of the bed with his hands on either leg and bending forward looking at his feet. And I went, oh! Like that. And as my head came down, so it was like a split second. Yeah. He wasn't there. So I said out loud to myself, oh, don't be so stupid. And then caught myself saying that and thought, well, why wouldn't it be? Yeah. And I knew he was there. Yeah. And then um, it was, we had an incident. My eldest grandson was 21 and John looked after him for the first two years. Yeah. They were incredibly close. We love all our grandchildren, but yeah. our oldest grandson was like so special to John, and it was his twenty first. And um, John had said he could have a party at the house, yeah. so that went ahead. Yeah. Um, but the party was the day before; it happened to be a Saturday, so George's birthday was on the Sunday. Eleven o'clock at night, I, I was recovering from the party, yeah. and um, we I heard something in the kitchen. A, a friend was staying the night with me, um, and. 
literally the friend got up, went in the kitchen and screamed my name and said, get out here now. And I walked in, as I walked in the kitchen, there was this, uh, on Alexa, was singing um, Come Away With Me and it was just finishing. And I stood there and I said to this friend, what? So his friend said, "It," and as he couldn't finish the sentence, it just came on Alexa. What came on, played next was um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Right. Which was John's favourite song. It's like, well, are we going to have that to, for him to leave the church? But yeah. we played a, a Welsh song for him to leave. Yeah. Um, and it was a bit like, and we stood there and it played the, the whole song. Yeah. And I, I could feel John in the room. Oh, yeah. I, was just, I was screaming. And it finished and Alexa went off and we tried to get it back and we said, Alexa, play Somewhere Over the Rainbow and it wouldn't wouldn't come on it went this, this song something is not available yeah and it was like and this friend said as i walked in, as he walked in the kitchen it was play it that it was singing come away with me that was i mean it was bizarre yeah and it, you know it's funny like when i've had similar experiences and stuff and i tell people that i've got from mates in there who are skeptical of all yeah. this sort of thing which understandably whatever but you know yourself if you yeah. think that was something um and they, you know, are sort of like just brush it off like that. That's just a coincidence, or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. and it, it's weird because I think does that come from a fear of not wanting to let yourself think too much oh, about both. it because you can't, you both. can't make it. It doesn't sound logical in your head. But there's a lot of things in life that aren't logical. No. Like when you try and think about them too into too much depth, doesn't make sense. Well, no. So well, to this me, won't make sense with no. it. <laughs> Well, to, to me, telephones. Yeah. And TV. Yeah. And being able to switch something on and see somebody that is, you know, standing, I don't know, in a park talking to you. Yeah. Um, at the same time and you're, well, it, there are lots of things. Yes, that can be explained <clears throat> scientifically, but it is still like incredible that that's coming across the ether, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's the same with with energy. And I do think that people that are total sceptics, total cynics, um, first of all, they haven't had anything happen. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, um, you know, people talk about being closed down and opening up, which we have to put it, we have to put uh, things into words to be, to make it explainable. Yeah. And I totally get that. But, yeah, there are some people that completely block. Block it off. Because they're frightened. Yeah, it would change. I think what well, I've got a mate who's a who's a big skeptic, and I think that maybe it's because everything he's ever known and how his brain works and how he sees life would completely change if he accepted that that was true. Well, no, it wouldn't, because some people can have things happen to them. Yeah, and they are complete cynic skeptics and don't even want to entertain it. And something can happen to them, and. They'll they'll almost you could say block that off. Yeah. They'll ignore that. Oh really? If if it if it if they can't explain it away, they will ignore it. Yeah. And I think that does come from a fear. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree with that. Because totally. you just just think about it. If somebody that dies, John is dead. John contacted me on that Sunday with that with that music on Alexa. Yeah. No one was in that kitchen. Yeah. My cat may have been in the kitchen, but yeah. he can't say, Alexa, play, come away with me. <laughs> yeah. you know I, mean? I don't, that's one thing I don't believe he can do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and I think that, seriously. So something happened there. Yeah. Uh, to play not only that, but then immediately there was no DJ, there yeah. was no one on the radio. We hadn't, it wasn't a radio station. Yeah. Just played straight away uh, somewhere over the rainbow. So, you, you know, no one can ever take that away that yeah. that happened. Like when I was 14 and me and my mum walked into the house at number 13, Waldemar Avenue, and a man's voice spoke to us, filled the whole room. Yeah, they call it EVP. Now it's got a name, electronic voice phenomena. Yeah. But w when I was like, how old was I then? Fifteen. So you work out the years. Th there weren't terms like that, and that happened. Okay, even if I, even if someone was to explain to me that what I did was a load of rubbish, here's the proof. You, it's not happening. I would still be saying, but what happened then? Yeah. Because me and my mum heard that. Yeah. And there was no one there. Yeah. It's un like. And that's where I find like 
you can go, you can't explain it, and they'll go, well, it just didn't happen. Well, but that's not an answer because <laughs> no. you, you're just going, there's yeah. no, there's nothing more. Absolutely. I, there's no way I can explain it, so we'll just say it didn't happen. Well, it did happen. So. Well, it did happen. And it that's did what happen. I find about a lot of these people who've had these NDE experiences. They come back and they've been brought back on the operating table and their doctor's like, oh, no, it didn't, didn't happen. It was your brain hallucinating. Well, I was dead for 20 minutes, clinically dead. Like, yeah. heart stop, brain stop. How, does yeah. that, how can I have seen everything well, you well, said? Well, how did I see that penny? Yeah. On the pelmet yeah. in the bedroom. And, you know, I'm talking to you about that now. Yeah. And I'll go years without even thinking of it. <clears throat> yeah. And yet when you think of it, it's an amazing thing that happened. Yeah. I used to say to my mum, oh, I, I, I had one of my fly... I'm, I'm laughing because I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I had one of my flying dreams last night and I went to the... We lived across the road from All Saints Church yeah. in Fulham, which is the bottom of Putney Bridge. We lived just around the corner. And in my flying dreams, I would come out of Waldemar Avenue and fly along the top of the buildings. I can remember seeing all the Copelands and the dirt and the pigeons and then fly into the turret of um, All Saints Church. And I remember saying to my mum, I was standing down looking at the tops of the roofs. Now, that wasn't me physically. I was in bed. Yeah. But what was happening? It's mad, isn't it? Do I mean... You, do you think... What, what, do you, what is your view on dreams? Do you think they're connected to to what we're talking about or do you think yeah, it is no, your... I think that I think that you can look at I'm quite willing to accept that some dreams are because our mind is overactive and we're not resting. Yeah. I'm quite happy to yeah accept that and I yeah. think oh yeah that's but then I think that there are dreams because I've had them yeah. where they're inexplainable and that it's something it's almost as if I'm out of my body having an out of body experience yeah. and that's happening because I've gone to, I'm resting and that's able to happen. Yeah. This is my soul doing that. Yeah. And I was a little girl. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was, you know, um, I had I'd had life experiences and I was remembering things. No, I was a young girl having these dreams. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? It is. How the mind works. It is incredible. It is incredible. So there are many, many ways, many forms that our soul can um, experience, have experiences that are pr they're profound. Yeah. And, and I'm not, I'm not an academic. No. But I'm not saying you have to be an academic to experience these things. But at times I just wish I was more, I had um, a deeper knowledge of what I'm doing. But yeah. I don't. Yeah. Because I think that, we're not meant to truly know because I think the wonders of our soul and the wonders of our life and the wonders of the energy yeah. that is within each of us is uh, is so magnificent that it would terrify us. Yeah, I believe that too. And I don't think that you, our our brain is part of our physical. And I don't. Believe, they say that you know you can have up to sixty thousand thoughts a day and all this stuff. So there's a limit on your brain. And I don't think that we're designed. To ha to hold the information. No. Well, I don't think there is a limit. size of information. Absolutely, because I don't think there is a limit. Yeah. I mean, you've only got to look at there is there is almost scientific proof on certain levels. Yeah. You've only got to look at people that have horrendous accidents with their brain, mm. and they can rewire it. I mean, I do think that it needs. You're, it's a bit like a your. You know, if you looked at. Um, your 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 mind as as a muscle. Yeah. You and I have the same muscle. Yeah. Okay. You are you're a fella. I'm a girl. But yeah. It, 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 if you worked your muscle every day, yeah. it would look completely different to my arm. Yeah. And there would be people that would say, "Well, he's got a different muscle." To, and it was like, "No, he hasn't." It's, it's just the same that, thing, it, but it's been and it's out. with the brain the yeah. same. And I do think that we are able to recondition, retrain, and reroute yeah. our thoughts. Yeah. Now the brain. If you looked at the brain as a computer. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. The potential in there is, well, you you can't even imagine in it and go there. You can't imagine what our brain could do. No, absolutely not. And I and I think that there's absolutely no doubt that is part of the work that I do. Yeah. You know, I I go on, when I go on stage, because that's where I do most of my work nowadays, yeah. but I do, I do one, still do one-to-ones, yeah. but it's just the time. Yeah. But when I go on stage and I'm working, um, I'm, I'm that young girl again. Really? 
And yeah, I'm I'm 71 and I'm told, you know, every day by my body that I am getting older. But I go on stage and I'm as alive as I was at 13 doing this work. That's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible because, you know, if I live to be 90 or however age I live to be, I know that with my work I will still be at the same level. Yeah. And you're growing. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you the, the older you get with this work, if you're the real deal, that is. Yeah. Because... We this work is now out there, and you know all and sundry think they can do it. Yeah, I, I was going to say to you business. about that. There's a lot of uh, well, there is. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Where, well, there's a lot of scammers out there, isn't there? Well, scammer, you know, scammers. The old fashioned word is charlatans. Yeah, but scammers, fraudsters. I get it. You can go online now, and there'll be my photograph t- saying they're me, but there's no way it's me. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way. You know, so it, it, social media nowadays has mm. introduced the scammers and the fraudsters to this line of work. Yeah. And it's interesting what you, what you were saying before, you know, how you feel like you have a responsibility, which is obviously so such a nice way to look at it because there's people, I think, that obviously are scammers. And yeah. they obviously don't feel that responsibility. Well, of course they're they don't. They're fraudsters. <laughs> Absolutely, they're fraudsters. Yeah. You know, you, you you could, there's another way I could look at it and think, well, how nice that they want to be me. Yeah. You know, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, little do they know my life. Yeah, it? you know, it is all back to perception. Yeah. But I think that with this work, if you can, if I can remain as pure mm. when I'm giving a message, when mm. I'm passing on the energy that I'm I'm harnessing around the individual, which when you think I'm going to be on stage and I can have hundreds, thousands of people in front of me, yeah. and yet I'm harnessing that individual's yeah. energy, I try my hardest not to interpret it. Right. Yes, there are times when I see things. I saw something last night, actually. I saw somebody and they were like, it was, they were... It was, um, I mean, we want to laugh when I say handcuffed and tied up, but <laughs> it was like not in a good, it was like, whoa. And yeah. everyone, everyone in that audience got it. Really? So it's like, are they picking up my energy? Really? Yeah, which I think they do. They don't realise that. You know, because I said, I don't have to tell you, do I, what I'm looking at? And they all went, it was no. like, they all in sync. They all saw it. Themselves. Oh, they all saw it. They all saw it. That's mad. It is mad. Yeah, it is. But that happens every single show. People say to me, you know, journalists are always saying, what's the what's the most magnificent thing you've ever seen or what's the best thing or what's the worst thing? Every single night incorporates that. Really? Every single message, reading that I give, it's like the first time. Really? But it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. And from when you're giving someone a reading, how does it... How, it's, I find it so interesting. How... What are you hearing or seeing? Like, how does it come through to, in your mind? Like- well, both. I I I see things in my mind's eye. Right. Like when I was talking to you the other day, um, someone came through and I felt like I was with your mum. But it wasn't your, obviously your mum's still alive. Yeah. Do you remember I said to you? Yeah. Was it a sister or someone? Yeah, sister, and I yeah. felt that her sister, I felt I was her sister with your mum at work. Oh really? Was your mum at work that I can't yeah, remember what yeah, I said? She, yeah, I, and, she was and, at and work, it's all but yeah. what and I and I think I might have said and I felt, oh I feel like I'm I'm because I felt your mum had hit her head. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember you saying Did you it. ask her? Yeah, she yeah, she she hadn't, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. So, so what do you think? Was that do you think that was her sister? I don't know. I don't I, I don't know how to interpret it. Like I, I'm just I'm very open to it. Yeah, so what you're I, saying, I felt I was sure. there and I felt that your aunt, your mum's sister. Yeah was saying to me, well, this is what I'm looking at, Sally. And I was going, all right, I just passed that on. So it can vary. I can see things in my mind's eye. I can physically feel things. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to remember the other day, um, the other night, I can't remember how long ago it was, but, but I've not been back on tour long. So yeah. it's <laughs> it like maybe like just four, four shows ago. Yeah. I was talking to someone and I felt something go through my neck. And I knew this person hadn't died because of an injury to their neck. Yeah. But I said, oh, it's really funny because he's so, so, and he'd had a, when he was a child, he had a spike go through his neck. Wow. Someone had thrown something and it had gone through his neck. And the person that he was, 
he was speaking to was there when that incident happened. So he was basically saying, do you remember when that thing went through my neck? You know, like you would do if yeah. you met up with someone, yeah. but this person was in spirit. And so he was like wanting to remind him of the times that they'd had. That's interesting. It's so interesting. So it's it, so at the end of the day, being calling yourself a medium with the work that I do is perfect because I am the medium between you and that person. You're who's the connection, you the, aren't you? I'm the connection. Yeah. I could be called the connection. You should. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, I'm the medium. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it is, isn't it fascinating? It is, it totally is. But you see, I've, I truly believe because I find it fascinating. Yeah. Because people say to me, why are you fascinated by it? You do it. And I'm, it's like, yeah, I might do it, but I'm still fascinated by it. Well, it's always something new, isn't there? Like there's always someone else that yeah, you come through and every some, single, another story to be uh, told. Uh, well, it, exactly. And um, that's why no two shows are ever the same. Yeah. No two readings. I gave this reading in America to these two, um, they were like rappers, these two big <laughs> black guys. They were lovely. They were twins. Yeah. They were identical identical, and they wanted separate readings. Oh, boy, did they get separate. And then they came together and it was like... Really? Well, you, I said, you might be identical twins and you might do the same work and you might, you know, like be in your sound box doing all your... your promote, <laughs> yeah. your, all your, your producing, but you are so different. Yeah. And they... So it, it, no two readings are ever the same. Yeah, I would imagine that, that's... that's um, isn't that interesting for twins as well? When the twins are so built the same, yeah, that they can be so and DNA wise, you know, look if you looked at these two twins, yeah. I'm sure if you got their DNA, you, th there would be like it'd be minuscule the difference. Mm. Yet they were so different, yeah, and how they thought about their lives and what was going to happen in their life. It's just incredible. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Yeah, and do you find obviously because of what you've been through with losing your husband and stuff that you find now that more people who are grieving are reaching out to you more than they ever have maybe because they understand that, I mean, you give so much hope to people and you always have with what you do. And then when they see that you're going through something as well, yeah. they think, oh, I really want to speak to well, them more they, now well, because we've got something we connect on absolutely. even more. Absolutely. I think that it's all about, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you can look those people in the eye now. I can look them in the eye and I can say, I know what you're feeling. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I didn't before. No. Because my ability allowed me to feel what they were feeling. Yeah. But now it's on an even deeper level. Yeah. Yeah. Like because I because of my personal experience. And I'm finding more, which is really interesting, is the fact that because I'm watching my children grieve, which is horrendous because anything else with our kids, we mm. can make right yeah. or we can try. Yeah. And we can say, come on, you know, I'm going to help you with this. But yeah. I can't bring back their dad. No. Yeah. And I'm finding that with my work, when I talk to, like I did last night, there was this lovely girl in the audience. I do, we do WhatsApp pictures in the second half. And um, uh, she'd put a photograph up of her dad. And I said, you know, I feel your grief so much because I feel my daughter's grief every day, yeah. the pair of them. And I'm connecting now with that. And I totally, but I'm, if I hadn't have lost John, I am I still think I would have be feeling her grief. Yeah. But it's on a different level and it's in a different way. Yeah. So it's fascinating. It is, isn't it? It's totally losses, losses, Loss of a parent yeah. is, is awful. Yeah. You, you know, you've lost your dad yeah. and you're a strong, outgoing man with interests and a life and you're living it, yet that your grief runs parallel with that and it affects yeah. everything you do. It does. It's mad, isn't it? It does. It does. And it yeah. was a great privilege to be able to talk to you and to speak to you um, and to connect with your father because of that, because it grief is very personal. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's so private to be allowed in. But I've always said to be allowed into another person's grief, I've always known it was special. Yeah. But now I've experienced it myself yeah. on a very deep level. Yeah. And I've, I'm experiencing my children's grief yeah. because I'm their mother. Yeah. Uh, as well as watching them grieve for their father. Yeah. Um, 
it, it, it's it's a different it's a different clarity. Yeah, it is. And no. and you see, I I talk to you, and you can never get you're never going to get your dad back. Yeah, yeah. So your grief will always be with you. Yeah, it's like but, it's a funny thing, isn't it? People yeah. say, you know, you'll your time, you know, you get anything. Time, you get used to it more. That's all that happens. Well, you, you don't get, get over you, it or get well, past it. What you it. do is you get used to the idea that he's not there. Yeah. But what becomes bigger is you go over how he died, yeah. where you were, yeah. where you should have been. Yeah. Why didn't you know? Yeah. Did he know? Did he suffer? Yeah. Why couldn't he tell? You go over all these different yeah. um, situations that you could never have changed. No. Because none of us go until we're meant to. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that too. And I think that, you know, I think one thing about my dad was that he was all for us as a family and he was always a worrier about making sure we were all okay and stuff like that. And I think I look back and I think maybe he got to a point where he, he thought, they're they're grown men. They they they've, they're set up. They're they're, they're sorted. Oh, he would have known that, yeah. and that would have given him great comfort. Yeah, that would have given. But your dad, you see, I think about three years before your dad died, there was an incident, and really? I think he got a bit scared. Oh, really? So I think he may have had feelings of what? Well, his health. Oh, his health. Yeah. And and yeah. I and I think almost as if three years before he died. I'm not giving you another reading, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I just I just get this sense as I'm talking to you now. Yeah. This is what I do, you yeah. see. I, it's if, coming if, naturally. But, well, if you had never had a reading, I wouldn't be doing this to no, you. No, I wouldn't course. intrude. Yeah, but because you But I do think about three years before your dad passed, I think he looked his own mortality in the eye. Probably, uh, yeah. So, so I, I think that he may have thought then, hey, up, I've got to watch this. Yeah. I think that that's what I think he, he felt. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that when he passed, it wasn't totally the the sense of 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 what what was going to happen d- didn't totally totally overpower him mm. yeah. with his thoughts. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's, it's, it's you know, it's, and it's it, mad, we it? can't when we when we go, we go. Yeah, it is. You know, it's it's like we've all got a number on our forehead. Yeah. You don't know when that time's up. No, do we don't. Yeah. We and, don't. And it's funny, you know, I, I, one thing I think about people who, who lose people is that I think you think about where you're at in your life and you think about your future and you think about the long road ahead of, oh, I might spend the next 30 years. You know, if I live for another 30, 40 years, I've got 30, 40, 30, 40 years without my dad. Yeah. And, but that's then big. You don't, because you don't know when your time's up. Like I remember my dad's. Uh, father passed away my granddad and I remember my dad was so upset about it and you know for a long time he 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 really struggled with it and he ultimately only passed my dad only passed away seven years later so he was only actually without his own father for seven Uh, years where in at the time probably it felt like it was going to be a lifetime yeah exactly it was only ultimately seven years well that's how I get through my grief that's how I do as well I think you know, I don't know what's around the corner. But you're young. But I, yeah. I look at my life, and this is the truth, how I get through my grief, and I'm not saying anyone should do this. This no. is just – and it's not every day, but there are days when I think, well, you know, you know, people, people go, oh, Sally, you've got another 20 years. You know, you could live, be in your 90s. You could be 100. And I think, well, actually, I don't think I am. No. So it's, uh, it's no big deal, really. No. I'm just going to live my life, do what I've got to do, take care of my kids, yeah. work – yeah. Um, which is my saviour, which when you lose someone, if anyone's listening to this and they're grieving, if you can work and if you can carry on working, if you can get your strength from your work, you're going to be okay. Yeah, I agree. It's about, I think, keeping your mind busy. Definitely. Um, yeah. Get yourself a project. Yeah, 100%. I'm moving into a wreck of a house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my project. Really? Yeah. And people go, oh, you know, my George goes, oh, this is going to take you forever to do. And I think, well, maybe I won't be here forever. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I'll it. I'll be lucky it? if I get a new kitchen in. That's how I think. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll be, like, I'll be lucky if I can save up to get a new kitchen in. Um, so don't panic, Mr. Mannerin, as I yeah. always say. Don't panic. Yeah. Well, Sally, it's been absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for coming on. And again, thank you so much for my reading the other day. It was um, so interesting. And yeah, there was a lot of things in there that that meant a lot to me as well. So I'm, oh, well, I'm yeah. pleased you enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. I, and I think that if, you know, doing a reading, if it can just um, interest that person, accuracy 
you have to be accurate because that's what people want. Mm. And people pay for readings, you know, normally people pay for their readings. So if you're going to pay for something, you want things to be accurate. Yeah. So, but I have never myself with my work thought I've got to be accurate. I've got, it's not going to, it won't work no. if you do that. No. So I just think, well, you're, everyone gets blood. Everyone gets a bit of me. Yeah. And, um, if that can make you happy, then then yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. But you are one. You are one of the people, um, and there have been thousands and thousands, and there will hopefully continue to be. Where I think w- it's not over yet. Yeah, we've got to do another one. Yeah. Do you not feel that? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm happy. To, <laughs> but I do happy feel. To. I, I do feel that. You may feel. Do you know what? This has opened up my interest. I'm going to have to speak to another medium. Yeah. That's brilliant. Um, and I think that. And there are times with with people when I give readings, and I think, do you know that was enough for them for the next ten years? Yeah, I think that's that's it. That's it. You know, I think if you get something out of it, that's great. And you know, I I think that you know, there's a lot to take. From even if certain things don't quite add up at the, at this point, yeah, in the future they might. Well, that's the way to look at it because a lot of information that that you harness is around the person, and it's you're picking up stuff for them that is uh, like about to happen. Yeah, I mean, I would never say I see people's futures. You know, I'm no. not a fortune teller. No, no, of course. Uh, but I do get an insight yeah. into what is around the corner for certain people. Yeah, that's really so. Watch this. Watch this space, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's good. <laughs> and, and and when's me, where's me na- next tattoo gonna be? Yeah, well, you know, on the other foot. Come and see me. We'll we'll do it. I'm go. I wouldn't go anywhere else. Perfect. Love that. Thanks, Sally, so much. Mm, you're welcome.